couple of things you need to notice. First of all, she pushes on the back of the puppy's neck right behind the head. And that's where a head collar sits. So, you know, when you look at something like a gentle leader and you look at why it stops the dog so well, in part, it's because when the dog pulls forward, it puts pressure at the base of the skull. And that is a natural stop signal in dogs because that's where they grab each other to stop. Watch puppies, watch adults, watch anything play, and watch what happens when they grab or they put a paw on that part of the neck. The animal stops. It's a stop signal. And notice that the puppy isn't afraid, isn't miserable, and there's no blood dripping here. And this is a carnivore with very sharp canines. Okay. Here's this chap thinking that he is human, he is male, he can get this dog to do what he wants. He points because he can, because he's got opposable thumbs. Okay, The dog doesn't have opposable thumbs. It's a primate trait. To expect the dog to be able to use them would be incredibly unfair okay because evolution didn't provide them with thumbs but he's pointing and he's doing this and this dog's rolling on his back and he's showing his groin and he's doing what's being called a deferential grin or grimace and his his tail is flaccid and his arms are his front paws are open and he's looking at the human and his ears are back and what this dog is signaling this had a caption that said the submissive dog and of course this is not a submissive dog this is a dog who is signaling he's open to interactions, and that's pretty much all he's signaling. And he's looking to the guy for the next step in the interactions. Okay? And what the chap forgets, because he probably never knew it, is that's a perfectly normal behavior in dogs. If you walk up to puppies and put your feet under them, and they're lying down, they will roll over, and they will give you exactly that same behavior and you see the German Shepherd puppy here doing it, except that that chap is not being looked at with the adoration that this puppy is looking at his mom with. Okay? And notice, same thing, tail flaxed, it, back legs flaxed, it, open belly, open paws. They're in exactly the same posture. Neck open, showing you're not a threat. But this is a normal behavior, in part for a species for whom elimination must be stimulated for the first few weeks of life. And you nose the inguinal region, and that then evolves into another set of behaviors. Okay? Unless people understand that, they're going to get on the dominant submissive bandwagon and got, you know, those are two words I would like the world to drop from their vocabulary. They're just not helpful, and indeed they're injurious, and we'll talk about why that's true. And you see these dogs offering this behavior in all sorts of situations. This dog is desperate to play, and he's on his back, you know, and he's got his parts hanging out for the world to see, and his, and his neck is up, and he's great. And what are the kids doing? They're playing war games, okay? And the dog is, no, no, play with me. So he's inviting them. That, that open groin area is, you know, an invitation to be willing to interact. And that was totally lost on the chap who felt that he had to stand there and point his finger and, and be firm with the dog. When, in fact, if you go up to a young pup and just stand there and look at them, they'll do that. It's a normal stage of puppy behavior that then becomes enhanced for other social things. Okay. Part of the problem is that we need to let go of a terminology that was misappropriated from wolves. And notice I say misappropriated from wolves. Because we're always saying dogs are wolves. Yeah, they are. I mean, in the sense that, you know, they're all canids. Dogs haven't been wolves as a species for 135 to 150,000 years. Dogs have been dogs at least for as long as humans have been humans, which is 60,000 years. And certainly, there have been breeds of dogs for 15 to 20,000 years. Okay, they may not be the exact breeds you're looking at today, but there have been groups. And certainly 12 to 1,500 years ago, the Romans had contests between their different breed groups of dogs, and those are well recorded. Okay. So dogs haven't been wolves for a long time, and if what we're saying is they're canids, that's fine, but as an evolutionary biologist, I don't let that carry a whole lot of weight by itself. Um, it means they have shared derived character states with the rest.